is your man Andrew Wood back here again. And today I'm going to be talking about jobber monsters. And the monsters I like to use as the jobbers in my game. The monsters that just take a beating and are always going to take a beating. They're not going to go over on the player characters. They're going to get killed. They're going to get beat down. They're going to get captured. Uh, they're going to be interrogated. And uh, they're basically just there to give the player characters some shine, particularly early on in the game. Now, what I like to use are kobolds, goblins, and vermin like uh, giant spiders, maybe even a giant centipede, depending on, on what I'm doing. Typically, at the beginning of a game, I, I just simply have the character's job. I have them get beat up and uh, practically almost nearly killed several times because I like to build in that sympathy. I think if the players are just really badass, just rough-shotting through everything, as D&D book sort of says, you know, just keep spoon-feeding them weak, weak fights after weak fights. That's what a balanced encounter really is, a weak fight they're, they're going to overcome over and over again. And maybe ever great once in a while, the game master will get so lucky with a bunch of 20s and, and take the party down. But I have to come up with ways that aren't going to result in them all getting killed that I can have them lose a few fights early on. It helps them keep them in perspective, keep them humble, and make the game uh, come from a, a, a stance of more sympathy. If you want, read a novel or watch a show and you see that that protagonist getting beat up early on, you're like, oh, I kind of feel for that guy. He's taking his lumps. If you see him just Kevin Zorbo, legendary Hercules, just walking through everything. You're like, oh, come on, dude, really? You just beat everything down? That's ridiculous. Now, I, I like to... So so doing that, uh, I'm going to talk later on about uh, monster ecology and a lot of the monsters that some people might use as jobbers, that are the kind of cool rules and nice things I like to do with them. But <clears throat> you pretty much have to have somebody to be the whipping boy. And I find those two races were great as whipping boys, kobolds and goblins. Now, some people like kobolds and goblins a lot, and they might do something, particularly kobolds, they might do something cool with them. They might use them in a different role. They say, oh, I don't want to have kobolds job, because kobolds always job, so I want to do something else. And, and that's fine. You can always take monsters and put them into a more interesting, more specific role. And even when I have my job or monsters, I like to make sure they have their ecology. They have their place. They make sense. There's a reason why they're attacking the party, or the reason why the party comes upon them and is able to put the boots on them. Uh, and I want to make sure that they do make sense that are coming across that I'm portraying a, a kobold not just four hit points running head first down like this to, to get their head chopped off by a battle axe uh, you know I like to get across their uh, their their lawfulness their pack mentality their hateful their spitefulness the fact that they are so despising yet so fearful of the larger races that they have this inbred sense of inferiority their cleverness their trap smithing uh, and the traps that they're going to use against a player character. Yet also, typically, they have fairly inferior materials. It's not like they're rolling out with huge DC numbers on these traps. So these are, uh, and you know, even there, kobolds. You know, you could throw some giant rats or giant weasel or something like that in there. You know, some of the dyers to help buff them up. You can, you know, throw them uh, some sorcerers or even a little part dragon kobold or something to to give them some more flavor and, and interest. You know, I like to make sure I'm. I'm putting over their language and have them sort of you didn't move silently hide in shadows, kind of creep up behind the players, taking advantage of their small size. And definitely, if you're going to have the monster job, you know, give it a little bit, like make it do some things to make it kind of cool, you know, explain it, be descriptive, and really just have the players do horrible things to it. Because the player hits a kobold, he's going to kill him, and just let him, just, okay, you got a kobold, what horrible things do you want to do to this kobold now? Do you just, do you just roll eight points of damage and add two hit points? What would you like to do? And let the players take that narrative control to really describe. Because that's basically what they're there for. They're there to be the George South of D&D and put your your guys over on their road to, to becoming mid-carters so that they can... Uh, have that feeling over there. Well, we accomplished a win here, particularly if you are going to feed them, as I like to do, some losses early on. And I find kobolds and goblins both work real well for that. You know, with goblins, you can throw some things like wargs or wolves in there with the goblins to ride on. Uh, you know, you might even throw one, you know, a little later, you might throw like a big group of goblins led by a, a bugbear that's just coming and smack the cowardly craven goblins around. And, you know, I'll, I'll do the voices and make goblins talk. Meh, 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 meh. And, you know, talk about how filthy and dirty and wretched the filthy little bee star and their shit covered dreadlocked hair and you know just just how repugnant they are the lice and such things that are on them um the crude pathetic weapons they use like they're trying to be fighting like a broken riding crop or you know just like a pointy stick one might be trying to hit you with a rock you know i, I don't i don't see goblins need to have like a bunch of short swords like maybe one of them has like a, a broken rusty short sword or something like that but you know they're just filthy derelict creatures they're not really going to go around anybody and 
you know, you could work like a giant spider, like the players going out there have to harvest some anti venom to bring to an alchemist, and boom, 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 it's you know a road for a nice little easy, quick startup adventure for the low level characters. You know, of course, I guess there's the classic going into the sewers and fighting fighting giant rats. I really don't like players going into sewers; like it's just disgusting. I wouldn't really, really be too entertained by going into a sewer and a medieval style sewers. You know, you go to the sort of ancient Roman style, which is, I guess what D and D sort of takes their style after. These are very filthy, disgusting places. Um, even into modern games, I, I just it's just not something I would do. So it's hard for me to like take my character. Like, yeah, I jumped out of the sewer for eight gold. No, 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 no just. I'm just going to farm some potatoes, dude. That's disgusting. I have no interest in that. But, you know, you can put the giant rats in, in uh, like, a cavern complex or, you know, they're eating uh, the farmer's grain or, or whatever, and you have to go in there and deal with them. You know, I think it is important. Too early on, maybe after a loss or two, give the players a good little win so they go, aha, we are better and bigger than something, and we, we can't get over I'm kind of interested to see when your comments. Let me know what, what sort of monsters you like to use as your perennial jobbers. Your whipping boys, the pieces of trash that your players are going to go over on, uh, and and why? Why you choose those? And if if you like to use goblins, kobolds, and giant rats, or, or giant insects, or giant um, spiders, things like that. If if you like that, if you don't like those ideas, and, and why? And also, you know, just to remember when you even when you're using the jobbers, <clears throat> and you're essentially sort of disrespecting these monsters, you can still come up with fine ways to still. In despite of the fact they are going to lose, they are going to get beat up, they aren't going to get much on the players. Still give them a little bit and still make them look cool. Give it good descriptions. Um, you know, talk about, you know, you can kind of even make them cool in their patheticness. Like, you know, talk about how filthy and dirty the goblins are and how pathetically unorganized their tactics are. You know, whether the kobolds, how malicious and malign and how hate filled their eyes are, but how fearful they are, the large player characters, and how they sort of cringe. As, as the players, you know, come upon them, and maybe after the players kill about forty percent of the kobolds, just break ranks and just run, or, or you know, the goblins do do such things. So you could really get a lot more detail and interest in them if if you work on to think about the ecology, think about the psychology that these monsters are coming from when they're dealing with such larger. Because a, a human character, a half elf character, is a massive to character to character that's you know the size of a toddler or preschooler, and kobolds and goblins are you know pretty much those two things. Um, so. I definitely would like to hear from you on that and see what you think about the concept of having uh, the monsters that, that are going to play the whipping boy role. So you can take other monsters and kind of put them up on a bit more of a pedestal, work them in more, have some more ecology, have some more interest and some more use, and have them not be things the players are just are just squashing, but again, also allowing the players to make sure they are going to get some wins. Like, okay, well, we definitely definitely got got those wins and when we're you know going to be able to take care of something so they don't feel completely uh, held down either so let me know what you think about that i look forward to hearing from you